Bible says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short, he was of short stature. Hmm, short men and Jesus. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him today, salvation has come to this house. Because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. In this fourth installment of the Contagious series, I'd like to share with you what I've titled, We Are All Sycamores. We all are Sycamores. Can you look at it and say, We all We all all are Sycamores. We all all are Sycamores. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's begin to pray. The Bible says, all right, can we pray now? Father, thank you because the entrance of your word will give light, give understanding to us simple folks. Thank you, O God, because we've come to learn at your faith. I make my tongue the pen of every writer, and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let's walk according to your counsel for our lives. Father, thank you because you have sent your word, and there's a purpose for it. We walk according to that purpose, Father. Father, thank you, God, because this message will transform and change our life. Make my tongue the pen of a writer, and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I prayed. In Jesus' name I prayed. Look at somebody and say, we all all are sick and all. all. Can we sit down? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. All right, um, this is the fourth installment of the Contagious series. And some of you are thinking, I didn't start this series with them. Uh, will I get it? Yeah, they are standalone. You will get it completely and fully. All right, one of the basic questions uh, that our generation is asking is about Jesus. And I will surprise you. But one of the basic questions this generation is asking is a question about Jesus. Uh, they are asking, who is this Jesus? How can I know him? Your best friends are, are saying... What do I need to know about him? What is there to know about this Christ? What is special even about him? Let me say this to you, that many of your friends don't get what the force about Jesus is about. Oh, you know, you, are, you even wear clothes. I'm a Jesus baby. I'm an Holy Ghost girl. And you sometimes say, uh, me fool. And then you keep shouting, oh, he's the power of the spirit. People don't understand why you are crazy about Christ. They have questions about the Christ. Like Zacchaeus, many people are seeking answers about the real Jesus. Who is this real Jesus? Who is this person? They want to know him. They are asking. And the truth is that many of them have heard about him. The truth is that many of them go to church. Some were even born in the church. Some were raised in the church. But they still are asking that question, who is this Jesus? Some have had rumors. You have shared testimonies. But they still don't have the clarity as it concerns who Jesus is. The question they are saying and what they are asking for is that they are seeking for a better elevation to see and understand and know who Jesus is. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 and then verse 3, Scripture says, And he sought to see who Jesus was. He sought to see. That means it is a searching. He sought to see who Jesus was. A lot of people in our generation are seeking to see who Jesus is. But Bible says, because of the crowd, and he was a short, he had a short stature. So there were two barriers here. I mean, two barriers. The first one was that there was a crowd. Right? And then the second one was that it was what? Glory to God. I mean, I, I, I used to pity guys 
uh, uh, because when ladies speak, they say, ah, what's your, what's your, what, what's your spec, baby? And then they say, he has to be tall, he has to be dark, he has to be handsome. And I'm beginning to ask myself, can he not be short, dark, and handsome? Right? So, the, 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 what, the, what these people face is not just a physical problem. We also saw that Zacchaeus faced a spiritual problem. He, the height even was a limitation to see Jesus. And you know, if you are a man, it's a different thing. If you are a woman, there are still elevations that can help you. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I know guys now wear boots, but there's no boots that can give you seven inches or eight inches. I, I can't boost anything. So, uh, uh, Zacchaeus, if Zacchaeus was somebody like me, he probably would not need the crowd. But the Bible says Zacchaeus was short. So he had a barrier. I, I could have made this a pictorial thing so that you can understand it better by calling some people, but let's not uh, embarrass ourselves in the house of the Lord. You order. that. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. There are still a lot of people who want to know the Lord. They want to see Jesus, but there are barriers in their life. And I want to quickly tell you about those barriers for seeing Jesus. The first one is what I call physical barriers. The desire to know the Lord, just like, just like uh, Zacchaeus does, uh, but there's no one to tell them about him. And there is no sycamore to stand on so that they can see him. There's no tree that can elevate them so that they can see him. There are still unreached people in our world today. There are still people who do not know about the Lord. You know, we come to church and we enjoy being Christians. But I hope you know that there are places, even in this country, that you may not be very safe to worship Jesus publicly. I hope you know. Uh, you know, I, I love how we say that uh, before we can worship in, in Lekki, we have to have an AC, we have to have all of those things. Guys who are ready to worship on a block of cement just to see the Christ, just to hear about the gospel of Christ. There are still physical limitations. And that's why we must support missionaries and missions. Um, I, I tell people that when you get rich, or even before you get rich, uh, a percentage of your income should go to missionaries and mission work. Why? Because you cannot go, but there are people who are going to places. You will not believe that there are places in Adamawa that people still don't wear clothes in this country. You are shocked. Oh, really? They are. And there are missionaries who are now going to those places. If they don't wear clothes, that means there's no school. If there's no school, then you can doubt that there is any light called the gospel. There are people, places, that the gospel has still not gotten there. There's a physical barrier. They have not had access to the gospel of the Christ. There is an island um, called the Comoros Island. Uh, Comoros Island, which is an amalgamation of our three small islands in Southeast Africa. Southeast Africa. Um, Comoros has a population of about 800 and something thousand uh, people. Uh, I think you will find that population. About, yeah, 839,000 uh, people. And that should be in your next slide. Check the next slide. You'll see there. Um, 839,000 people. Uh, do you know that Comoros is 97% Islam? 97% Islam. That, that nation. Now, understand that that's not the only problem. It is um, against the law to give anybody the Bible in Comoros. You go to prison for preaching Christ in Comoros. It's 97% Islam. And there are now missionaries who are invading that place, despite the fact that they know that their life is at stake. And I believe that all believers should pray for places like this. I know, I know sometimes you ask yourself, I don't have prayer points. Now I'm giving you prayer points now. Uh, you should play, pray for places like this. Uh, Comoros Island. Now, now, that's physical barrier. I want to move very quickly today. Number two, you also have what we call cultural barriers. Cultural barriers. Um, many people cannot consider yielding to Christ because of the culture they live in. The question is not that whether they have not had, it's not that they have not had the gospel of the Christ. They have heard of the gospel of the Christ, but they can't make a decision about that gospel because of the culture they live in. Because of the pain that giving their life to Christ will cause them. They cannot have a public declaration of the Christ because of what that means uh, even for them. Um, recently, I, I read a report. Uh, like I advise that you subscribe to newsletters um, 
um, like Christianity today, like gospel, like leadership, uh, where you hear about things that are going on in the world. I, I read about India. Do you know that recently, because of the new president in India, um, there's, there, there's risen now a lot of conflicts uh, against the Christian faith. Um, so watch Hindu, Hindu worshippers. Uh, are now attacking Christians in the villages and taking their properties. Now, when they attack you because you declare that you are not a Christian, they will take your land, take your property, take your business, uh, and then they will drive you away. And there's nothing you can do. So for you to say you are a Christian, you need to now count the cost. You know, you being a Christian in Nigeria now, is only for you to just pray in tongues and come to church and dress well. Now, declaring that you are a Christian in such places means that your land is going to be taken away. Your property is going to be taken away. And then when they go to the police, the police tell them there's nothing we can do about it. So it's like it's backed. That oppression is backed by the government. Now, I tell you of a place also like, like South Africa. In South Africa, you find many ladies in church than guys. Because the guys have been taught that it's only weak men that go to church. Why? Because they, they believe that the oppressors, those who drive, drove the slave trade, and those who did apartheid, they took the Bible in their hand while they oppressed their fathers. So men in South Africa, even if they are convinced about the gospel of the Christ, they won't make that decision because they don't want to be called weak. Cultural. Cultural. Um, I remember somebody came many years ago to Reverend George, an allergy. I said, I follow your program, I watch your program. Ah! He said, I've done the sinner's prayer, but I cannot say it publicly. He can't. If he says it publicly in a learning, ah. we have like a mutual friend that he says all the Christian lingo more than you. If you call pastor, ha, ah, it is well. <laughs> God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Everything you say, he knows. He say, ah, his grace, so I say, ah. you even know this one. <laughs> he says, grace we have received. But it cannot publicly say. Those are cultural barriers. And it doesn't mean they are not believers. That they, somebody say, if you don't declare Jesus publicly on the street, you are not going to be careful. I can't find that in scriptures. The Bible says Joseph of Arimathea, John chapter 19, verse 38, was a secret disciple of the Christ. Right? Sometimes you need to give people also room to grow. So you preach to somebody now and say, I can't tell my dad yet. Don't push them to tell their dad yet. Let them also grow to that level because they are the ones who know the price they are going to pay. Number three is also what you call relational barriers. So we've looked at physical barriers. We've looked at cultural barriers. The third one is what you call relational barriers. And relational barriers are, unfortunately, many Christians. Relationship they have with many Christians. Many of us are friends. And the reason they can't give their life to Christ is because of you. Praise God. Uh, because you are bad influences. Yeah, they say, ah, <laughs> this is Christianity. I don't want it. So, right? Uh, we have become repellent. Bad Christian boyfriend experience. Glory be to God. Uh, bad Christian girlfriend experience. Say, so, ah, uh, she said he's a, he's double, she's double dead, you know. And uh, she'll be praying in tongues. You see, uh, that guy, unfortunately, is not a believer, but he has better moral standard than you. So he doesn't want what you have because he's better than you. Bad Christian neighbors. Bad Christian neighbors, bad co-workers. I remember growing up, we used to live in a place at Basin uh, uh, for, where all training ministers just stay. Uh, we just stay there and all of that. And then there was a particular brother that um, when he begins to pray, I'm assuring you that the whole of Basin wakes up. Glory to God. The whole of Basin. And, you, I, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I can call some of us <laughs> and they will tell you, ah, they knew him. I, I can tell you his tongue. I can still remember it. Every bo- it's not that he wakes up the whole neighborhood. You know, there's a way you pray at night that it reverberates. When you make sound at night, the, it echoes. The whole street wakes. Inosa! Inosa! When does Inosa begins to go on? Those of us who just slept wake up. Now, there are people who have come and asked us, can you please reduce your prayer? We are not asking believers not to pray. We are saying that you need to be considerate of nothing mothers. Be considerate of other people. You see, what we do sometimes is our lack of being considerate. 
inconsiderate. I read of a story, I think it was, was it my wife, someone was telling me this story about somebody who was in a new neighborhood and then said there was not going to be gen in that neighborhood. I said, I no generator in this neighborhood. I said that generators are making noise. She doesn't want the narrator. She wrote. They begged her. She wrote to the government. She wrote to the property people. They said nobody will use generator. So everybody went on the inverter. Hey, some people, they are hot at night, nothing. She got married and have her first baby. The baby will not sleep at night because it's hot. She now owns the generator. Ah, the whole community now stood up and said, there is no generator in this area. What goes around? It comes around. You see, you, you cannot, your testimony will be dented if you live a life of no empathy. Let me say this to you. Write this down. Bad Christians are the worst advertisements for the gospel. Bad Christians. They are the worst advertisements for the gospel. I would rather you are not called James. I would rather you are not called uh, Peter. Than being called a Peter or being called you know, <laughs> Mary. I was going to say matter. <laughs> Number four, spiritual barriers. The reason people can't give their life to Christ, why they can't commit, uh, is that what we call a spiritual barrier. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Scripture says, The God of this age have blinded their hearts so that the glorious gospel of the glorious light of the gospel of Christ will not shine even upon their hearts. Therefore, one of the things you must do is to pray for unbelievers. Pray for your best friend. Don't just share the gospel. Somebody say, I can't share the gospel, then you can pray. Pray that the veil be removed. Pray that the veil be removed. This is very important. We must offer ceaseless prayers for the lost. Now, let's go back to being sick among. I don't know whether many of you did your childhood in Ibadan uh, or in cities that are not like Lagos State. I found out that you may grow up in Lagos State and you may never have seen a tall tree or climb a tree uh, because there are no trees everywhere. All of you are just building houses very close to each other. Uh, Lagos boys never climb mango tree because they didn't see mango tree. Lagos boys never climb an orange tree because they didn't see it. Uh, but where I grew up from, ah, uh, I mean, we, my dad used to be a lecturer at the Polytechnic Bardo. Going to Polytechnic Bardo, you will see mango trees. So we climb the mango trees to take it right. You can stone it to come down, but um, it might be dented. So you go, in, go on top of it, and sometimes somebody is down. Just pluck, you throw. Pluck, you throw. It was such a beautiful childhood. Praise God. Climbing trees. I mean, Leola boys, and you can't climb a tree. I don't know what kind of person are you. You first of all must start by climbing tree, then you'll be able to climb a fence. Glory be to God. <laughs> Somebody say, oh, oh, why, why should you climb a fence? How, how can you go to Leola College and not climb a fence? You will climb fence. A lecturer will be chasing you one day. Sorry, they call them teachers. A teacher will be chasing you one day. You, you've gone. And praise God. So you must be able to do some of these things. Right? So, uh, but, but uh, Zacchaeus. Um, was not climbing tree to get a mango. He was not climbing the tree for fruits. Zacchaeus was climbing the tree. Why? Because Zacchaeus needed to see Jesus. Now, Zacchaeus was a rich man. And it takes losing your dignity to want to climb tree. Imagine me now climbing a tree and they are snapping my picture on Instagram. Now, that is the kind of guy Zacchaeus worked, and Zacchaeus was climbing a tree. Why? Because he wanted to see Jesus. Now, there are three things that Sycamore tree did for Zacchaeus. Number one, it was that he lifted him above the crowd. He lifted him above the crowd. That's the first thing. The second thing was that the Sycamore tree allowed him, his branches allowed him to climb up higher and higher to the place where he wanted to be. By your work with people, they must be able to go higher and higher to the extent that they can see Jesus for who he truly is. We all are sycamores. The first time is that you lift them up. Now, as the man went through the branches, the branch helped him to be where he wanted to be, which is where? To look above and see Jesus. Can I see Jesus by walking with you? Can I know who the Christ is uh, 
because you are my best friend. Can I get the proper perspective of the Lord because I, I am working with you? Can I see the Lord based on our relationship? Can I ask you questions because there are things that make you different from me because I'm close to you? Men want to see Jesus. They're asking questions about him. And the second more three, number three, is that he helped him to just see Jesus. Will your life help people to see Jesus? It's a simple message this morning. Will your life help people to see Jesus? Are your decisions, are they going to help people to see Jesus? The person that is asking you out that you cannot even tell pastor, that person cannot help you to see Jesus. So. She said, she, somebody came and shared a testimony. I said, PFA does not like the kind of job I was doing because that job cannot help people to see Jesus. In fact, it will help people to run away from Jesus. And a leader in my church is doing it. You now say PFA does not. It's not PFA, oh. it is Jesus. Will your decision help people to see Jesus? If you marry that man, will you raise children that would, men will see Jesus through their life? Today, I think it's a, a lot of questions. It's about questions. We must remember that Jesus broke barriers to God to get to sinners. To sinners. Scripture says, <laughs> he told him, he said, today, salvation is coming to your house. And people were hungry because he was a sinner. They said he was a sinner. You know, there's a, there, there's a difference between somebody who sins and somebody who is a sinner. Um, no, that's not the way it is. There's a sinner when you know personally that you are a sinner. There's a time when people know and say that, ah, that person is a sinner. That's a public sinner. Right? You see, Zacchaeus in his day was the definition of corruption. He was a representative of a corrupt system. Are you following what I'm saying? It was the face of a corrupt system. So that whether it was corrupt or not was not subject to conversation. Everybody knew that this one is a corrupt man. It's what you call a public sinner. You know there are people when you go on TikTok or you go on Instagram or you go on Twitter and you see their handle, you don't ask questions whether they are sinners. Because their business is to sell their body. And people are there buying it. So you know that this one is a sinner. That is how it looked like. Now, imagine me now going to that kind of person's house. We did not meet at a restaurant. And I went to a house. That one you are thinking of. Yes, that one you are thinking of. And I went to a house and sat down and ate. Ah. Uh -uh. People have the right to say he went to a sinner's house. Say he went to a sinner's house. Was it not during the day of politics that somebody said something and the whole of Nigeria were abusing the pastor that because they have collected the envelope? Now, that is somebody who did not even follow, not a public sinner. Not not talk of this. So the whole crowd said Jesus has gone to sinner's house. I'm sure some people will, some people are following him, they will go back. I thought, this guy, I don't tell you. I don't tell you, he no pure. He no get consecration. He no pure, even pure. Sorry, I was supposed to preach, preach in English. He's not pure. If he's a pure guy, he won't follow me. Let me tell you about Zacchaeus. The guy I like to call Mr. Z. Let me tell you about Mr. Z. Mr. Z was a short man. If Mr. Z was a member of the German, and we're trying to describe him, that short guy is Mr. Z. Do you know that Zacchaeus means righteousness? He means the son of righteousness. That's what his name means. Can you be called a son of righteousness and you be the definition of corruption? Are you following what I'm saying? Zacchaeus was also a chief tax collector. He represented the corruption of his system. Do you know the chief tax collector's name in Nigeria today? Zacchaeus. Okay, you saw it, Tom. <laughs> Zacchaeus, I didn't So if you want to be a task collector, maybe you should change your name to Zacchaeus. It seems like there's something anointed about that name. But the chief tax collector in his days uh, was Zacchaeus. The Jewish people don't like them, tax collectors, because they were betrayers. They saw them as betrayers. 
Because the tax they were collecting was not for the Jewish nation. They were collecting tax for the Roman nation, the Roman Empire. And you know, there's no law of fixing tax. Those guys just fix it the way they want to fix it. And they, you have not seen a corrupt system that being involved in tax collection. Till today, in tax collection, ah, they, they serve you the bill, but you can negotiate. <laughs> and Zacchaeus was one of them. But Mr. Z must have heard about Christ. Because somebody does not demonstrate that kind of desire, except information or knowledge has gone ahead. He must have seen somebody who told him what happened to them because they met Jesus, or he must have had something that Jesus did. There was an information that had gone ahead that would make a rich, corrupt guy to begin to run ahead of the crowd to climb a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus. He wanted to see him. In fact, the Greek word sought to see is the word setio, which means with a passion, with a craving and intense desire. This guy had a craving and intense desire to see Jesus. And that leads me to something. If you had met Mr. Z at your workplace, would you have thought that he has a passion for Christ? Let's answer that question. If you had met Mr. Z at your workplace, would you have thought that God was working in him and creating an intense desire to know God? There are many people around us that we are saying they are corrupt and evil. But there is a working of God and a working of grace that is already creating a desire and a an hunger for God inside of them. Even though on the outside they still wear those kind of clothes. On the outside they still held a corrupt system. But there is an intense desire. You would never have known if you have met Mr. Z that Mr. Z had that kind of a desire. Do you know how many Mr. Z are in our neighborhood? Do you know how many Mr. Z are in our, our community? Sometimes they, that guy is a beauty. You know what they mean when they call somebody a beauty? Ah, that guy is a beauty. You see, that beauty guy, the Lord is working in him. Yes, there is an hunger and a task. That one that you think is sexually addicted, there is an hunger and a task. There is a deeper longing for the Christ inside of that guy. But you can't see it until that opportunity came. The miracle I believe in this was not that Mr. Z saw Jesus. I believe that the miracle was that Jesus saw him. He climbed the tree to see Jesus. You know, when it, his intention was just to see Jesus when he was running. But as he saw him, the scripture says Jesus looked up and said, Mr. Z, come down. Zacchaeus, the miracle was that Jesus took notice of a sinner. If you had told Zacchaeus that morning that Jesus would die in his house, he would faint. He would say it was impossible. Jesus didn't only see him. Jesus abandoned his schedule to go after him and say, today, salvation comes to your house. You know what Zacchaeus said because of that show of love? He said, Immediately, he started talking like a repentant person. He said, if I stole it, he said, all of my goods, he said, I will give 50% of it away. You don't understand why scripture told you half of it. Because, you see, the rabbi of those days, especially the only and the righteous one amongst them, they demanded that everybody gives 20%. That's the highest they will ever demand from you. 20% back. But to know what it meant to Zacchaeus that Jesus saw him. Zacchaeus said, I will give 50%. Nobody asked him. He said, I will give 50%. 50%. Could it be that our show of forcing people is because they have not encountered the true Jesus? Could it be that sometimes our manipulation is because people have not encountered Jesus? That when they see the true Jesus, they will be the one looking for opportunities to be a blessing. Today, I want to teach us on being sycamore. And by sycamore, I mean that we live, our life become an elevated ed edifice through which others can see Jesus. Does it sound like a good plan? That for the sycamore tree, he had to get to the sycamore tree, climb it so that he can see Jesus. Can your life 
be an elevator through which others can see Jesus. Do you not think it will be a great thing if I become Sycamus? If I become Sycamus? If we all are Sycamus. And that, that means we need to live intentionally. Many of us don't know there is an attractiveness as it concerns the gospel and our life. There's something some of our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors see in us that uh, we minimize. So we don't value. We do not see anything special in it. But those who are not believers, they see it. And for them, it's something major. And I want to quickly show you those things. It's called the attractiveness of the Christian. It's called the, the attractiveness of the believer. Being sick, come on, we are speaking of the attractiveness of the gospel. What you carry as a true Christian. I'm not talking about a, a Zacchaeus. You know, Zacchaeus also teaches us that you can be called a righteous man and not be a righteous man. It's not by name. It's by your life. Right? Because by Zacchaeus' name, Zacchaeus should never be a tax collector. You get it now. Uh, all right? So you may name yourself John. You know, or you may name yourself James. Like myself now. Right? Uh, what's your baptismal name? I say it's James. Some of you don't know that now. You know you know. All right? So you can name yourself James. Uh, or you may say Moses. Fetch out from water. Oh, glory be to God. You, you can name yourself names. It's not the name. It's the life. It's the life. I've seen people bearing Christian names and I, I was begging God that can they at least change their name? Because they are so, they are so, they are so much of a disgrace to the kingdom that can we please change their name? Let them be bearing their traditional name. So that at least when people hear it, they can't say whether they are Christians or they are eh, something else. Something else. Glory to God. What, what is it that they love in, with us? The first one is that our attractiveness, which if you want to be a sycamore, you must have all these things I'm talking about. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Look, I remember I say it's not time to sleep. It's not time to sleep. It's, that's not attractive. That's not attractive. That's not attractive. All right, it's not time to sleep. All right, number one is a Christ-transformed life. Christianity, and there's nothing attractive about somebody who has not changed his life, but he has changed his confession. There's nothing attractive about somebody who has not changed his life, but has changed his confession. So, I believe, I believe that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. You have changed your confession, but you have not changed your life. Many people think that being a Christian is a mental ascent thing. No, sir, it is not. It's a complete change of life. To repent means to be going in this direction and not to stop, but to stop and to turn and to begin to walk in another direction. That's what it means to be a believer. It's a testimony of a transformed life. Let me say this to you. There is nothing as beautiful as a life totally transformed and turned around by the Christ. There's nothing as beautiful as it. There's nothing as beautiful as it. You know what? They saw you before you knew Christ. Your friend knew you before you say you gave your life to Christ. They know what you can do and what you are doing. It's not what you can do. What you are doing. Uh, and so now that you have changed, they see that you are no longer doing those things. For them, it's attractive because how can you change? Oh, can Bob anymore? You know, carry guess again? Just like that. You stick with one woman. Ha! Ah, Baba, you are, how are you doing it? What? We they go club together. How are you they do it? No, I don't know. For them, they can't understand it. It's a testimony of a transformed life. I remember that story. That my father in the Lord of George was sharing how people who knew him in Ofa, how we can drink everything. They call him, don't let me call you this because you will not disgrace my father in the Lord. They, they used to call him a name that is because of what he was drinking. And so he would drink, he would sleep on the road. He would get home. And he would be glad he didn't get home. <laughs> it will be glad. He drinks to stupor. That was the kind of life he was living. No future, no ambition. He didn't have any ambition. Very brilliant, but he was given to drinking. Addicted to drinking. Addicted to the occult, to, to, to occultism. So one day, one of the people who knew him in a farm saw him on TV preaching. I said, Ah, is this not? I'll mention it. Ah, is it not the one? Is the one. Ah, wrote and called. I said, I want to come and see you. The man came to the house and saw him. And in a conversation of 15 minutes, 
The man said, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, more than 100 times. He looked at him, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. God, you know that means God is great. God did this. He said, when he told him, when he was going, he said, Hey, yeah, come on, go and say, Can I pray with you? He said, The man knelt down. Knelt down, say, Pray. Pray for me. The God that did this, I wonder God. A testimony of a transformed life. A testimony of a changed life. Not a mental ascent. A testimony of a transformed life. It was Pastor Jim Simbala that said, People pay attention when they see that God actually changed persons. And set them free. When a new Christian stands up and tells how God has revolutionized his or a lie, no one doses off. When someone is healed or released from a life controlling bondage, everyone takes notice. Everyone takes notice. And that is why the best thing we can do for Christ is to be a Christian. Live by the values of the kingdom, be the salt. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Bob says, uh, do not be conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There is a transformation that God expects from every one of us. There is a transformation that God expects from every one of us. Give me Philippians chapter 2, and then verse 14 to 15. Philippians 2, 14 to 15. He said, do all things without complaining and disputing. He said, that you may be blameless, blameless, and armless children of God without fault in the midst of a what? A crooked, a perverse generation to, before which you are called to shine as light in the world. We are called to shine as light. We are not called to be like the world. We are called to be different from the world. We are called to be different. Be different in your workspace. Be different in your neighborhood. You are not called to be like them. You are called to a life of difference. He said we are not disputing. It's not contention. It's not argument. It's a life that is different. That's what it means to be a believer. Are you going to be a sycamore after this service? It's a transformation that your life can exude to the world. I'm done with Christianity without transformation. You know, the song we used to sing when I became a believer in that old gospel place is the things I used to do. I do them no more. Listen, if there is nothing you used to do that you don't do anymore, now that you have met Christ, then you have not met him. Even Zacchaeus says, where I've been cheating, I will not cheat anymore. There's a transformation that happens if you have met the Christ. Is your life an elevated place? Will I see Jesus by looking at you? Does your life have enough power to convict me? Look at that last question. Does your life have enough power to convict me? And then number two, a Christ-molded humility. This spiritual virtue is the antithesis of the chief virtue in the world. And the chief virtue in the world is pride. Let me tell you, the reason many of your people want to blow is so that you too can take they want to show you. The reason they want to buy Benz is not because they like Benz. But if they can drive a Benz, they can show you. God is not calling us to showmanship. He's calling us to christ like sheep. We are not called to show the world through our sources. We are called to stand out. There is nothing as appealing as finding a powerful man who is humble. As finding a rich man who is humble. Christians are not humble. Men of God are not humble. No, I remember growing, I remember many years ago, I saw an old man, an old man of about 70. And he was coming in the church. And I saw him. Oh, I'm, I'm a man of God. I, I am anointed. But I saw him. I said, ah, good morning, sir. How are you, sir? As I went down like this, he said, no, don't go down. I said, say, no, no, the anointing does not go down. I said, no, 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 no. We have to respect our elders, sir. How are you, sir? And the man left. The young boy that was following me looked at me and said, pastor, don't do that. 
It's called of God. He said, I should not do that. That anointing should not go down. He said, anointing should not go down. I said, how? I said, even Paul said, honor the, honor the elderly as fathers. He said, no, anointing. I said, which anointing? Do you know anything about anointing? Jack Bonner, do you know anything about anointing? What do you carry? Have you ever cast out devils here? We cast out devils. We lay hands. We heal the sick. It does not mean anything. You have to honor elders. An elderly person is coming with two bags. You are doing Lagos girl. Are you a Christian? She's struggling. Like Hello, ma. Hello, ma. Who you there? I'm telling you. What are we doing? Humility. What the word has, the principal thing the word has is pride. Because that is the chief thing that the devil has. The devil came down from the throne because of pride. If you want to be like Christ, then you must be defined as being humble. Your identity cannot be found in things. You should be found in God. That's the only way you can be humble. Someone say, see the way he was speaking with me. Who are you? In the analysis, you are clay. That's who you are. Clay. Clay. That's what you are. Clay. Sound. That's why it's important to cooperate with the Spirit to work His work inside of us. Without humility, there will be no spiritual growth. There will be no conformity to the Christ. They are teaching you in church. I know that one before. And your life is like this. You don't know anything. Don't know anything. I, I was preaching somewhere. I remember. I want young man say, Tell them, sir. I said, I came to tell you too. That was the last time he said anything in that administration. What do you mean, tell them, sir? You don't come. If you want to talk, say, Tell us, sir. What do you mean, tell them? If you know you are not part of them, what are you doing, George? Humility says, I will not demand my rights. I have none. I will not be offended when I don't get my way. Many women, well, sorry, many women. What kind of English is that? <laughs> Certain women cannot live in their husband's house because if they don't get their way, they will be so, they, they will they will they will be sucking throughout the day. Your husband said no. <laughs> oh God, she said no. He said no. Why don't you do that when your boss said no at work? He pays your salary now. Now this man, because he's not earning as much as you are earning. Say, babe now, babe now. No, no. Now he will now say what he wants you to do to make you happy, not because of his conviction. Eventually, it will tell in your home. Grow up. Be humble. It's not every time you will have your way. I found it out in life. Even in ministry, it's not every time you have your way. If I have my way, I won't be here. <laughs> I just said that, right? I was very comfortable in London. What, what am I looking for? I will not be here. If I eventually left London, I should be in Canada. What am I doing here? You think we have our way? We don't have our way. We have his way. He has his way. It's God's way over our way. One day I will teach you about the cost of following him. Then you, you almost cry for me. It's, it's, it's a life that is not you, but him. It's number one. It's the cost of following him. Therefore, as God's chosen people, Colossians 3.12, only and dearly love, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, and humility. Paul was, uh, Paul, Paul was saying, clothe yourself. Just like you wear your perfume. Choose to go out today with kindness. Choose to go out today being humble. Fine girl, fine girl. You are not the only fine girl. I'm tall, I'm dark and handsome. Very soon, you will discover that no matter the gym, it's going down. It's sagging. Be completely humble and gentle. That's what Paul said. It's a recommendation in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 11 verse 2. You will miss out on the abundant life that God wants for you if you refuse to let go of pride and follow his purpose for your life. 
It's a pride invested word. It's the reason your boss is angry because you didn't greet her. Even though you go by first names in your office. But he still wants you to greet her. Maybe you call her Susan. But you must greet Susan. If you don't greet Susan, you're in trouble. It's a pride invested world. It's the reason people borrow money to take houses they cannot afford in Lagos. Drive cars they cannot afford. And they have kept the cars in auto shop now. Because Sinubu has come to power. They are now driving their fee 4 instead of their fee 10 Engine power, they raise it like this. Woo! Well, has gone. <laughs> Baba, I think I want to buy a Toyota. Number three. What do you need? You need a good relationship. A sycamore that the world won't see, apart from a life transformed by the Christ, apart from the humility that Christ is involved, is that they want a good relationship. They want to see you have a good relationship and a good home. A good home is not a choice for a believer. Why? Because we are the testament the world sees. We are the... See, see, see this, see this. The institution called marriage is instituted by God. And we are God's children. If we cannot get it right, it means that it cannot be done right. Because if God's children can't get it right, the world can never get it right. But the world should not be able to get it right, and if they don't get it right, it should not affect you. Why? Because they don't have uh, the spirit of God inside of them. Therefore, their standard cannot be your standard. We live in a time when relationships are failing. One of the things believers can do is to have a loving and loving relationship. I'm not talking about love relationship alone. No, no, no. I mean have a healthy relationship with your co-workers, with your neighbors. Some of you here, you are, you are not greeting your neighbors. What? I, I, I still cannot understand how you have a bad relationship with your neighbors. I can't get it. I don't get it. I've lived in many houses. When I'm going, people are sad. That's how to be a Christian. Every time I greet her, she's waiting for me to greet her first. She's waiting for me to greet her. Why are you counting? You are proud. You are proud. I don't get it. We are bad ambassadors of Christ in the workplace. Some of us. You know why? Because we are vindictive. We are lazy. And we go late to work. And you don't do your work appropriately. You are not a good staff. You are not a good signature signpost of Christ in your workspace. You are the one who is the grape vine of other people's matter. Ah. Shall I date in Tayo now? Are you sure? I ah, go and ask me. Ah, of course, if you come from me, it's legit. It's legit. You are the legit rumor monger. You are the legit blogger in that place. We are just, believers sometimes are just terrible people. And that's the best way to put it. Terrible people. You know recently on Twitter they were talking about bad bosses. And people are sharing their experience. You know 70% of the people they shared, they, are, they, they talked about, more than 70% of them were Christians. That they said they were bad bosses. 70% of them were Christians. And the funny thing that will also be any Christian names. What damage are you doing to the kingdom? I want to ask you, dear Christian boss, how do you treat your subordinates? You are just a line manager. How do you treat your subordinates? Do you know that there are Christians that when they say they want to promote them, people don't want them to promote them? Because they know they are in trouble. <laughs> dear Christian entrepreneur, how do you treat your staff? Are people who come to work for you. You collect contracts. You bring skilled workers. You are not paying them. Say, Kosanwo is a lie. Kosanwo, you have bought, who bought wristwatch? And they did not pay. You bought Adidas shoe. They did not pay. You are waiting for a gamma shoe. They did not pay. You took your girlfriend out to VI. They did not pay. You are a thief. You are a thief.
Galatians 5.22, the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is kindness, is gentleness. You know, love, the Bible says in 5.5 5 of Romans, has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, it's a choice to leave that love out or not to leave it out. I can't choose. I can't choose. Even in marriage, our marriages must be better. Oh. Peace be still. Let them see how you are doing. So I was shouting before. Okay. Even in marriages, our marriages must be better. Let them see how you are doing. How are you doing it? They are struggling with their marriage. One of my friends called me. He had this guy, this lady he had known for years, and three of them were Muslims, are Muslims, and they were talking about how their husbands were. That their husbands, they don't stay at home. When they say they don't stay at home, it means they don't stay with them as a one woman. They have, they have other side kicks. Is this side kicks? Chicks. They have side chap. They should have side chicks and side people they were going to. And they were just complaining. And they were not looking at him. They told him, said, why are you doing it? You are faithful to your wife now. He said, ah, that's the thing to do. He said, it's not the thing to do. They taught you people in church. He was telling me, he said, the Holy Spirit we have on our inside, they don't have. He can tell you don't do that. He can tell you you are going to fail. They don't have it. Therefore, your marriage should be better. Because you have an equipment they don't have. You tasted that food. It was salty, baby. It was salty. But as she wanted to speak, the Holy Spirit said, can't you see the way she's sweating? Can't you see the way she's sweating? If you see anything, yeah. So she comes out and says, how is the food? He said, baby, it was good. Fantastic. Honestly, you know it could be good, but it's good. How you are able to do that is the Holy Spirit. If not, if you say the way you felt. Show me for Don't you know some skills? My dad had a potential. Do you want to give me? They'll see you outside. You do. You can't cook. <laughs> That's how their marriages become like that. But you have something that, that restricts you. I said, don't say that, baby. Don't say that. I don't know whether the Holy Spirit talks to you that way. I, because it knows me, I'm very stubborn. The way he says it sometimes, to pastor me. <laughs> if you, it's your, your own, he doesn't say, I don't say it. I mean, he knows. He has to. If you try it. Or sometimes again, say, what did you just do now? I said, I didn't say anything. I didn't know she now. I won't say anything. I but if, if I don't say anything, it's what I'll go. <laughs> say, come on, go and behave yourself now. If we don't have those who control the marriage, I'm not the head of that marriage. Yo. It's Jesus. If I don't have a controller, ah, you don't know me, oh. me, <laughs> God. You think there's a good man? No man is good. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. You think that a man sees a woman that is so shaped and is not taken away. He goes and takes away. He says, my God. But as he says, my God, the God tells you, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? But there's nothing that tells them that. Your relationship must be better. Your boss is a wicked person, I know, but you can't treat her the way she treats you. If you do that, you have reduced yourself to a level. What is now the investment of the Christ inside of you? What's the value? What's the value? Number four, you need to live a life of kindness. I think I had five. I think so. A life of kindness. You need to be kind. Some of us are not kind. Ah, we are not kind. How can you live a life of kindness? It is by living out the goodness of God. Remember I told you about joy and rejoicing. Joy is on the inside, that's why we can rejoice on the outside. The, the goodness of God, you see, when we say God is good, is the state of being of God. It is that state of being that allows him to be kind. Listen, it is the state of being of being good because we carry now the nature of God that allows us to be kind to other people. Jesus said no one is good, right? That means only God. 
It is that ability of God inside of you, the seed of God on your inside that brings forth goodness on your inside. What people see is that he's a kind guy. Can I ask you a question? Who is the kindest person you know? Don't answer, but just think, the kindest person you know. Why do you think that person is kind? Why do you call that person kind? Two things. Kindness is seen in the way people talk to others. The way you talk to others matters. There was a time, the kind of things we say now was considered ash. People don't say them. There was a time. But right now, somebody can snap a picture of his wife. And people can say, ah, how did you marry this kind of ugly person? They will say it. They will say it online. It's not your wife. How did we become like this? You go on Twitter, they even now call it CT, Christian Twitter. And people will be calling people liars, evil, because they are trying to correct a doctrine. No, you are not correcting any doctrine. The foundation of doctrine is love. It's kindness. If you don't have it, then you don't know anything about doctrine. You don't know anything. You go there and you see the names people call each other. Unbelievers don't call themselves that name. I'm not saying don't correct, but the foundation must be love. There are words that should not be said by you. You look at your boss, you look at your mate and say, he's an idiot. You. Okay. Okay, it's okay. It tells me that the fruit of the Christ has not gone deep inside of you. It doesn't. We are not a kind people. People say anything, ridiculous things about people. They say, well, you know, it's, it's my truth. It's your truth to be telling so that, so how, how they look. Okay. It's also, so second way you should know kindness is the way people treat others. Proverbs 11, 16, a kind-hearted woman gains respect. Gains respect. This is how to gain respect though, as a woman, not make up. It's being kind. It's being kind. Being kind. Some Christians are evil. I said it, yes. They are evil. When we were getting married, are you following what I'm saying? Many years ago, many, many years ago, and of course, it's going to be 10 in December. It's many years. Ah, it's many. People, some people cannot be married for 10 days. I said, I did 10 years. Ah, please, if you people don't celebrate me, that you will hear, you will hear a message. Ten, 10 years. Now, 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 listen. Listen to the news. She just got a job some months before that time. So she hadn't been confirmed at work. That means she was not entitled to her yearly, annually. But she still had... She could still get to live on compassionate ground. She could get every other leave. But that would be by um, discretion, at discretion of the manager or, or the boss. And we're getting married. And this woman, a Christian, told her that she won't get a leave. We thought it was a joke. So eventually, she gave her two days leave. Two days leave. When she cried and cried, she increased it to three days. When I say two days, I mean including Friday. Yes. So that by Monday, we are planning to go back to work. She was a Christian. A Christian. No, she was not doing, she was not doing the right thing. No, it's not that work. People, when they were sick, they gave them leave. In fact, after she stayed there and somebody was getting married who was not confirmed, and her boss gave the person two weeks leave, she was not thinking, so... People told her and said, you should have written to HR at that time. What kind of a woman is this? A Christian. If she did it to an unbeliever, and I now come after that and say, I want to preach. Say, wait, is it the Christ that this other woman in my work follows, that you want me to follow? I don't want that kind of Christ. I don't want that kind of Christ. Romans 2, 4. Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering? Not knowing that the goodness of God leads to repentance. Actually, what makes us all safe now is the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God. Let's get practical. What are some of the ways we can show kindness to others? I'll just list them. Number one, pay attention to the feelings and the need of those around you. Pay attention to the feelings and the needs of those around you. Don't just talk. 
Pay attention to their feeling. Two, look for ways to encourage others. How can I encourage this person? She's going through his life. What can I do to encourage them? Number three, lend a helping hand, even when it is not requested. Everything is not money. Even if you don't have money, ask them, what can I do to help? When I was getting married, the most honorable money I got that I honored so much was a man who came to me in church and gave me an envelope. A paper envelope. He made a, he made a paper envelope with a paper. And I opened it. It was 200 naira. I was very glad. You know why? Because it took him so much. It took him so much. That's a heart that just wants to be part of your joyful moment. Compliment people authentically. They look beautiful. You don't go to hell by saying it now. They are smart. Let them know. Everything in life is not a competition. Compliment people authentically. Number five, be patient and polite in every situation. Next one, show consideration for other people's time and resources. You came to see your pastor. He stopped everything to see you. Show consideration. Have a joke, Pami. Go straight to the point. How can you, <laughs> I, say, I say, okay, so you called me, I missed your call. And I said, okay, you are talking now, send a voice note. You are sending me 25 minutes voice notes. Please, what happened? Somebody sent 17, and then I thought, ah, I will I listen. I was still, while I was yet thinking, another 20 minutes on came inside. He said, I forgot to finish. What did you forget to finish? Number, finally, refrain from gossip. This talk will kill you. Enjoy it, man. You just like gossip. That's why people are afraid of you. They don't want you to be in their space because you talk too much. Number five, live a purposeful and successful life. A purposeful and successful life. That's how to be sick of Failures don't attract being a success attract. That Christianity will preach that uh, it does not matter what you become. No, it matters. It matters. If I'm going to be sick of more trees, it matters. Be exceptional at your workspace. Be exceptional in your career. Let's do designs. I mean, face a project and let me say, ah, he has to be bola. He's <laughs> the only bola that can, that can pull this up. That's it. Let them know. Do exceptional work. I know you are not where you want to be. But even on your journey, do exceptional work. One thing we have that the world does not have is that we have a purpose-driven life. Nobody who does not know God, who does not know God, can have a purpose. Even if they do, they don't know it. I'll tell you a story. One of the biggest guys in this country, richest guys in this country, richest guys in this country, I was interviewing one of his friends. I was asking him, how do you determine how important is purpose? <laughs> he said, you know, he said, I'll, I'll tell you a story. So let me tell you the story he told me. He said, I was with this guy. He mentioned the guy's name. I won't mention his name. He said, you know, and he was telling me, he said he wanted to start a foundation. And I said, wow. He said, yes, he wants to start a foundation. That you see, there's a level you get to in riches that you have to start a foundation. And the man said, okay, so what is the purpose of this foundation? He said, you know, can work as a foundation. Uh, he as a foundation. So he's doing a foundation because everybody has it. Little wonder the foundation never left the ground. When they started, it was on newspapers and everything. Now you can't hear any of those things. Because there was no purpose. Believers underestimate the value of purpose that they have. You have a sense of purpose. You have a sense that this is what God wants me to do with my life. They don't have it. And they look at that and they just, they just, it attracts them. They are jealous of you. But you underestimate your purpose. Some of you now, as I'm speaking, your conscience is kicking in. That I, I left that purpose in university. It was funny level last I thought of this thing that this man is talking about. Lagos has carried purpose from you. 
You better go back to it. You are not going to be remembered for the amount of money you make. You are going to be remembered for what you do. The impact you make. And then finally, I'll tell you this. What is it that they love about our life? What is the most attractive thing they love about our life? Because I was trying to get a point and I saw that it would be so much. So I summed it up in this last point. It's a life full of intangibles. Our life is so full of intangibles. You know, I, I've had people ask me, I say, uh, uh, PFA, you said we should preach to people. What if I want to minister to somebody or preach to somebody who does not have money problem? Who does not have trouble? Who does not have problem? What will I say to the person? And I say, you know, you don't look at the rich person and say you have more money by coming to Christ. In fact, don't tell anybody that you have more money by coming to Christ. If I've not told you before, knowing Christ may make you poor. In fact, you have greater chance of being rich without being a believer. Because they will bring a paper to you at work now that if you can just put one zero, in fact, you don't have to put anything, just sign because they have already done all the zeros. Just sign. It is you that don't want to sign it to. Why? Because you're a believer. Why are you not sleeping around if you're not a believer? I'm telling you that this thing, it will cost you not to have money like you think you have. <laughs> Therefore, we don't teach it for money. You teach it for the intangibles. One of my pastors, I can't mention his name, Pastor Tobin, um, used to be the MD of Board of Board of Industries, BOI. Eh? Bank of Industry, I say Board. Bank of Industry. And um, used to be in CBN and all of that. Big man by all standard. So he was sharing with me and he said, you know, sometimes my friends come to me. And when they say friend, you mean friends of that caliber. And they look at him and say, why are we getting older and you seem to be getting younger and you don't go to the gym? He says, and truthfully, he has thought of it. He hits the same thing they hit. He does everything, but he has come out with the answer that is the glory of God. And then they tell him, why are you always at peace? Well, then, you, I, you, I call you, you say you switch off your phone, you are sleeping. What kind of, we can't sleep. You see, there are levels you get to that they don't sleep anymore. I hope you know. They don't sleep anymore. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and ask some of your managers they, all of, most of them, that's why they have high blood pressure. They have things they are treating. There is a level they don't sleep again. If they want to sleep like this, they don't remember something. Pie, and then their heart goes, poor, and that's there. See, you even switch off. Or you say your phone is ringing and you do not hear. How will you not hear? He said, God gives me peace. He said, we want this, this peace you have been talking about. You've taken this thing for 20 years now. And that's why I told you that, you see, they are looking at you and it might be a race. They may not be convinced now, but they have been looking at you. See, this piece you are talking about, it's an intangible. You can't, you can't touch it. You can't touch it. Another piece is joy. Another intangible is joy. Actually, all the intangibles were what the Lord packaged and called the fruit of the Spirit. You can't see it. You know, sometimes you don't think your life is changing, but you are becoming more gentle. Like the daughter of mine that shared her testimony. Glory. Amen. You, 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 you may not know, but you are becoming more gentle. And people are looking at that gentility and say, what is this? They expect that you should have slapped your boss with what she said. I looked. Ah, the day I knew that Christ has worked upon me. I will never forget. They called me to one conference room meeting many years ago. And this man started talking. He said, how do you behave that way? He said, this is nothing but youthful exuberance, Amy. <laughs> in my head, I was thinking of the answer in Greek and Latin in Yoruba that I could give him back to back. And he said everything. You know, when, you know some people have, have been looking for opportunities to talk to you. The day you mess up, that's when you will know. A conversation that was supposed to be like five minutes. This guy was talking for one hour. I'm not lying. One whole hour. And say, no, you can't go. All of you can't go. And I went out of that place. And honestly speaking, if you know me, you know I don't have emotions. I don't cry, but I was crying. I, tears were coming down. I won't call it cry, but I was. 
He was just coming. Ah. I was not trying to, you know, when you're trying to form, but the thing was, the more I clean it, the more it was flowing. Inside of me, ah, little boy, you are calm. Everything I, ah! I just left. Desmond came to me one time and said the client spoke to him. And if you don't know Desmond, this boy, you don't know him. Desmond had an issue one day with his girlfriend. I can't tell you now because he, he testimony to share. He was sharing like it was his girlfriend's testimony instead of Jesus' testimony. Let me share. <laughs> that day, in my house, I, in my house, himself and the special son were not an issue. In my house. A special issue. I want it to be on record. That's what I'm saying is now. So that people who are watching it can know. Now, this... On top, in, our, in our house, I took them upstairs. The guys had, that was just that they would not hear what we were saying. It was a mistake. That is rubbish, sir. That is rubbish. I was now afraid that our neighbors that has never had me would not think that it was me and my wife that were fighting. And then when you get it, you will not speak Igbo. I don't know. Ah! I'm not doing it again. Ah! When I looked at it, I saw how much Jesus will have to work for him to even say marriage to me. You are in front of your pastor, you are talking like that. If you are the girl like they don't come. No, it's not. They have already done it behind before they came. I said that to say this. So don't worry, we settled it. I know you like Ufu, I'm about to much. <laughs> so I tell you the end. He said. So she came, he came one day. And one, he now said, hmm, I still have changed. I, I, I was looking at him. He said, he said, one of my clients, he just called me. He started talking. He said, he said to a lot. He said, and every time I want to talk, some people say, keep quiet. And I'm talking. It's not I'm looking for money for me more because our business is done. He said, I want to talk. What are you looking at? So when it was done, I caught the phone and I started crying. I said, once he gets here, bye. <laughs> they have gotten to him now. It, it, it is working now. You see, it is working now. You see, it is working now. There are things that people will call you and say, are you a stupid person? How will he talk to you like that? And you kept quiet. Don't worry. It, it, it is working now. Until you see, eventually they will now say, and I want that kind of thing. So that I will not respond like a madman. That's the reason you see somebody, the other day I was driving from VI. You know Lagos can mess you up. Lagos can mess you up. There was a guy who wore tie and suit. And he came down. And I saw, back, back inside, I was, ah, inside, I was going. I said, ah. Ah. And then, boom, they came out. Inside traffic. Himself and the Aguero. Sorry, what do you call the person that load? With his tie, the conductor. I feel, ah, ah, ah. I say, my God. With his tie. Who did this to you? If a conductor says it's 1,000, Please, if you don't cannot pay, just give him your time. Say you can say this. You have no business fighting with a conductor in Lagos. You have no business. No business. That brother disgraces entire generation. You know, nobody can say that the conductor disgraces himself because that is him. That is him. The intangibles. How, how, how goes your character? Give me Galatians 5.22. Let us mark it. But the fruit of spirit is love. How goes love? How goes joy? Some of you need to go and listen to that midweek service. How, how goes your joy walk? How goes your rejoicing? There are people, I remember them. Even in the office when we are happy and just talking. When they come in, we keep quiet. They are joy killers. And they are believers. Say, no, I'm firm. You are not firm. You are an evil person. How goes your peace? 
You know, there are people that are so wicked that when everything is even going peace, they just feel like Ejeka Dagboru there. They just, there are people like that. <laughs> that job, how's your luck suffering? That's why you are resigning everything. You are resigning, you are resigning, you are resigning. Will you resign on your husband? This is a training for future. How goes your goodness? And how goes your faithfulness? Jesus said in 1633 of John, he said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you may have peace. He said, in this world you have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Listen, peace is attractive. Is it the same salary we are taking? And you are not anxious at all. It's peace. It's peace. There's a rest you have that the world does not have. They see it all. They may not tell you, but they see it. It attracts them. It's attractive to them. And let, 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 listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is our major differential in the world. It's the intangibles. It's the joy of God inside of our heart. Like I said last week, it is the blood of God that gives us joy. The blood of God inside of us that gives us joy. It's, it's our joy giver. Right? Do you have joy? Do you have joy? People just say, why are you always, every time I see you, why are you always like this? It's joy. It's joy. You can't lose your joy because you're, you lost your money in an investment. You should be sad, but you shouldn't lose your joy. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Are you going to be a seeker more? Can I be attracted to Christ because of your life? Can I? Can I? In that attitude of that question, bow your head, bow your heart. <coughs> and we just want to do a diagnosis of our heart, even today, and our ways. And your journey is going to have about two minutes to do that. How good a Christian am I? How good a Christian am I? Can, can people see Christ by looking at me? Is my life an elevated platform for people to see Jesus? We're talking about being contagious. Just don't, don't really pray. This is what we call contemplative prayer. It's contemplative prayer. You know, search me and know my ways. This is a prayer of just searching. Some of you, the Holy Spirit will tell you, <laughs> remember the way you spoke to that person. You didn't represent me well there. Some of you have not been representing God well in your office, in your workspace. You've not. You are a recluse. Even Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus. He spoke to Mr. Z. No matter how corrupt and wicked that lady is, you should speak to her. You should speak to her. You should speak to her. That's what it means to be a believer. He has not called us only to good spaces. He has called us to spaces where the lost are. The final verse we read says, he said, the son of man have come to save and to seek that which is lost. That's what he's called us to. That's to just, just, just meditate upon it this morning.